On January 9th, 2007, Steve Jobs introduced the world to the iPhone. From that moment, he knew that it would become revolutionary. Almost two decades later, smartphones have changed the world in nearly every conceivable way, changing communication, education, entertainment, and our social lives. However, smartphones also introduce the world to a vast array of problems. Addiction and disinformation are rampant. People are exposed to a constant drain on our attention and energy, and we have entered an era where everything is shaped by the fast change of information in our society. In many ways, we have become dependent on these devices, to the point where not having our smartphone feels like losing a physical part of ourselves. In 2008, you could work and live perfectly fine if you didn't own a smartphone. In 2018, on the other hand, they have become an indispensable tool. If you don't have one, you cannot adapt to the modern world. Today, in 2023, these devices have reached a peak in technological advancement. As we have seen in the past, technological revolutions such as the printing press, the internet, and the smartphone have changed the way we relate to each other and the world. So what could the evolution of personal communication be? Is it possible that we will have to merge ourselves with technology? What would you think about placing a device in your brain that would allow you to do everything the smartphone does but much faster and much more productive? What if, in order to keep up with a rapidly changing world, everybody had to adopt one of these devices or be left behind in the dust? Today, I'm going to talk about brain-computer interfaces and their implications. But before we do that, let's go explore what these devices actually are, how they work, and how we can understand the arguments for and against them. What is a brain-computer interface? A brain-computer interface, or BCI, is a small technological implant that people put in their brains in order to interact with external devices through inputs. These inputs work through small electrical signals produced by our thoughts. This can be done either non-invasively through electrodes that detect electrical activity, magnetic fields, or blood flow, but also through invasive surgery, which is what worries people the most and which I will focus more on today. These electrical signals are interpreted by the device, which through algorithms and tools like machine learning, adapt these inputs into instructions that can be applied to everything from software applications to controlling hardware. Let's take a look at the advancements that are being made today. Neuralink, Elon Musk's company, is the most popular example of a company actively developing BCIs. In April of 2021, they released a video where we see a macaque monkey named Pager play a game of Pong against the computer. However, he doesn't use a manual control input. He is controlling the game using his brain. When I saw this for the first time, I couldn't believe it. It made me realize that we are getting closer to a future where biological beings and machines interact as one. However, Neuralink has also encountered problems recently regarding FDA approvals and moving over to human trials. And despite Musk saying that this would happen in 2023, I highly doubt it as he is known for making these wild predictions that rarely come true. And as we will see soon, it might be a bad idea to rush into these trials as the results can be very dark. Hey everybody, it's me a week after this video was originally recorded. So apparently over the course of the last few days, Neuralink did get an FDA approval and I realized that I was wrong with my past statement. It did happen, which I find insane. And it just goes to show like how fast things move in the world of technology. Something you would never imagine happening one day becomes reality next week. And as we'll see soon in the video, this has a very important implications. So I have no idea how this is gonna look in reality, but we are gonna see some clinical trials apparently according to the news source and the tweet that Neuralink published a couple days ago. So. We'll see how that happens, but for now, let's just continue watching the rest of the video. There are several reasons why a person might choose to get a BCI implanted in their brain, but I will go over three main ones. The first one being helping people with neurological disorders. The first reason for getting a BCI offers the best argument in my opinion for adopting these devices. It is using them for medical reasons. BCIs have a wide range of helpful capabilities for people with motor disabilities and could become an important revolutionary technology. Like CRISPR gene editing, the beginning of a new technology in human evolution starts with a benign goal of helping those who need it. But soon, ethical reasons started rising when people not only use them for medical reasons, but to upgrade themselves for the sake of it. This leads us into the second reason for adopting a BCI, which is evolution of productivity and communication. So this second reason has to do with increasing our productivity and in theory our own quality of life. The utility of smartphones has arguably made our lives better. I believe this despite the many problems they have caused. The way it has eased communication, connection, and access to information should not be taken for granted. Could BCIs lead us to a better quality of life? If the adoption of this technology is inevitable, we should ensure that the most ethical adoption of these devices is implemented. Otherwise, we risk facing a future where the damage of splintered attention, disinformation, and addiction caused by instant content is made much worse. Now, the third reason for adopting BCIs is to keep up with the pace of AI. This third reason for adopting a BCI is more existential than practical. We are in the middle of an AI revolution, where the world will be changed in majorly significant ways. Artificial intelligence technology will grow exponentially, and we don't know what challenges await us in the future. People like Elon Musk present the argument that upgrading ourselves is necessary in order to keep up with the rapid changes. 
This idea seems compelling, but it also makes me uneasy. We don't know exactly what forms general or artificial intelligence will take, and I feel that if we rush into this technology without thinking about the consequences, we might create more problems than we solve. This is why we need a new philosophical movement in order to think about these issues, as I argued in a previous video. Because in the future, these devices might evolve into something we are not prepared for. Now, let's take a look at the future of BCIs. First generation devices such as Neuralinks could only be the first step of something much greater that we are not prepared for in the future. So we're going to take a look on what are the things that I think will become the most important when we deal with the future of BCIs. Because one day we will know exactly how neural connections work. And once we do that, we'll be able to create artificial brains and even replicate the things that make us human, such as consciousness and complex emotions. If this happened, we could see people gradually replacing parts in their brains to, in order to become fully artificial beings. Also, why stop at replicating the limited human intelligence, where you can increase your thought processing and capabilities into something that surpasses human cognition? If you choose to, you can even opt out of painful emotions such as sadness and anger while upgrading. Why keep these things when you can just be a god machine with the ability to control what happens to your thoughts? Now you can see why taking this path can cause significant problems and existential issues. So that is why right now we're going to take a look at the arguments against adopting BCIs. Do you remember Pager, the monkey from before? Nearly a year after that video was released, it was confirmed that more than 20 of the same macaque monkeys from the UC Davis Primate Center died in quote, extreme suffering as part of the Neuralink experiments. According to the news articles, monkeys were not provided with adequate veterinary care and that an unapproved substance known as bioglue killed monkeys by destroying portions of their brains. Obviously it is heartbreaking to hear cases about animal cruelty and experiments that are meant to further science. And if we continue with human trials, we have to ensure that things like this do not happen. Science should always be done in the most ethical way possible. And this applies to everything including the first generation BCIs. Another thing about these devices that I want to clear is that as we saw before, these work from brain to computer, not computer to brain. So a lot of misconceptions that people have is that somebody might enter their thoughts and emotions and even hack them. But in reality, this is more on the side of science fiction horror fantasies, like this won't actually happen. So no, you won't wake up as a zombie one day or have your consciousness be transported into the matrix or something similar. So that is something that I wanted to clear up, but there are still some significant risks related to BCIs that we have to go over. One of these risks is the risk of a misinput. So as we saw before, these devices work through inputs from the brain to the computer. But could we actually be able to accurately control the way our brain interacts with BCIs, especially with the complexity and fluctuations of brain patterns, as well as the unpredictability of some of our thoughts? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't like something to be activated for an email to be sent based on an intrusive thought. For the social part, BCIs could create some issues. As I explained in my video about transhumanism, when people adopt some of these technologies, it creates two different classes of people, those with the upgrade and those without the upgrade. So we, you would have, in theory, people who are much more capable, much more productive with the help of these BCIs and the people who can't afford them. So this would actually create bigger problems related to inequality, and that is something we have to include in the conversation. One option could be regulation of these devices, while we understand more about their implications and the way they are accepted in our society. So now my final argument against BCIs is a little bit more grounded and it has to do with mental health. For example, how many times have you felt like you can't really stay away from your smartphone? Many days we feel like these devices have taken a much bigger space in our lives and sometimes it even feels painful to separate ourselves from the computers, the internet, and smartphones. And this could actually become much worse when it comes to BCIs and these kind of technologies. It feels sometimes like we can't be physically separated from the internet, but what happens if you actually literally can't be separated from the internet? What would this do to our psychology, to our mental health? This is something we need to really think about and understand when we talk about BCIs. Having a physical implant in our brains that we can't take off can lead to many problems, questions, and even disorders that we haven't thought about already. And I think everybody has a right to disconnect from technology every once in a while. And I get it, everybody has the right to implant these devices in their brain if they choose to do so, but we also have to have a conversation of a society of what happens when the majority of the population has them, and when social pressure causes people to get them even if they don't really want them, the same way it happened with smartphones, with social media, and it feels sometimes like can't really live with social media in the modern age, like you're not really uh, connecting with the rest of the world. And this could actually become a problem with BCIs in the future. So that's something to consider. So to conclude, BCIs are going to be one of those technologies that are going to change the world in many ways in the future, along with gene editing, with artificial intelligence. And we have to prepare ourselves for these kind of questions. We are entering a phase of human existence that we are not prepared for, and having these kind of discussions, conversations, are a great way to lay down the questions we need to understand uh, what we have to do in the future and what ethical laws and uh, answers we need for the future. So with that idea, I'm going to finish the video. So tell me right now, 
Would you get a BCI right now? What about in 5 or 20 years when the evolution of the BCI has become more advanced, more safe? Would you actually do that, put an implant in your brain? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Help the channel grow. And I'll be updating my social media with more of these topics. So if you want to follow me, uh, go on Twitter, go on Instagram, and give me a follow. So that would be everything for today. Once again, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more videos in the future. That would be everything, and thank you for watching Tomorrow Matters.